Look at this. 1 to the x is just 1, a perfectly flat line, and here's y equals pi. Another flat line, higher up, they never touch, so the equation 1 to the x equals pi feels impossible. Now, let's step into complex analysis. If we treat 1 to the z as a nice complex function, entire meaning analytic everywhere, and bounded meaning it never blows up, Louisville's theorem hits like a hammer. A bounded entire function must be constant. Watch the mapping. Move z along the real axis. And the output stays stuck at 1. No motion, no growth. That looks exactly like bounded and entire, so it should be constant forever, which would mean 1 to the x can never reach pi. Contradiction. So the only escape is this. Our hidden assumption is wrong. Let's explore the real definition of complex powers. In complex math, we rewrite powers like this. a to the b equals e to the b times log of a. Now apply it to our claim. 1 to the x equals pi. That becomes e to the x times log of 1 equals pi. But on the real line, log of 1 is 0. So this collapses to e to the 0 equals pi, meaning 1 equals pi. Error. So the real question is, is log of 1 equals 0 the whole story? Start with something harmless. Negative 1 squared equals 1. Now take the natural log of both sides. You get log of negative 1 squared equals log of 1. And if you pull the exponent down, you'd write 2 times log of negative 1 equals 0. But that step is the trap. That rule only works after you choose a branch of the complex log, so log stays single-valued on that region. Now watch the geometry. On the complex plane, a half turn, angle equals pi, lands you at negative 1. So e to the i times pi equals negative 1, which means log of negative 1 can be i times pi. And a full turn brings you back to 1. 2 pi returns to the start, so log of 1 can be 2 pi i, not just 0. That's the key. In the complex plane, 1 has infinitely many angles. We can write 1 equals e to the i theta, rotate by 2 pi, you land on the exact same point, 1, rotate by 4 pi, still 1. So 1 isn't just e to the 0, it's 1 equals e to the 2 pi ki, where k is any integer. Here's the mechanism. Write 1 as e to the 2 pi ki, then 1 to the x becomes e to the 2 pi ki times x. Now let x equal u plus i v. When you expand, it splits into two effects. e to the negative 2 pi k v sets the magnitude, and e to the 2 pi k i u sets the direction. To hit pi, the magnitude must match pi, and the direction must land exactly back at 1. All right, now we solve for x. Recall the two conditions we split out. Magnitude e to the negative 2 pi k v equals pi and direction e to the 2 pi k i u equals 1. First, focus on the magnitude. Take the natural log of both sides. Negative 2 pi k v equals ln of pi. So v equals negative ln of pi over 2 pi k. Now the direction. We want e to the 2 pi k i u 2 land exactly back at 1. The simplest choice is to match the exponent to 0, which gives you equals 0. More generally, you can be any integer over k, but we'll keep the simplest branch. Now assemble x equals u plus i v. That becomes x equals negative i times ln of pi over 2 pi k, and for one rotation, k equals 1. x is approximately negative 0.183i, purely imaginary. Now we verify it. We claimed x equals negative i times ln of pi over 2 pi k. Start with 1 to the x. Rewrite 1 as e to the 2 pi ki. So 1 to the x becomes e to the 2 pi ki times x. Now substitute x. Inside the exponent, the 2 pi k cancels. And i times negative i becomes 1. So we're left with e to the natural log of pi and e to the natural log of pi is just pi. That's the verification. In the real world, 1 to the x is always 1. Pi is a flat line above it. They never meet. But in the complex world, 
the story changes. Because log of 1 isn't just 0, it can be 2 pi i times k. That creates a whole family of complex x values that make 1 to the x land exactly on pi. So the impossible equation isn't wrong. It's telling you complex exponentiation has branches. Thanks for watching.